Welcome back here. It's our final day here on stream and we're going to be streaming something special for all of the ladies. My name is Birgit Kim and joining me here today is Nana Dana Rashi. Welcome back to the stream. Welcome to the America's Qualifiers. What's up, Kim? I'm happy to be here, man. I've seen some very interesting matches so far and I heard that the matches have been so exciting that we've been going like hours beyond the planned hours. So I'm looking forward to what we can see today. And especially again, we're back at the women's scene. I want to see a different region, different strategies, right? Because I think that in the past, I guess one or two weeks, you know, very fast, we've seen a bit of, a bit of interesting developments coming through in the meta too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, we've talked about this extensively, uh, even with uh, Mirko and uh, Naisu, by the way. You guys can check them out on the other stream later on. They're going to be streaming, of course, MLBB, uh, the final stage for the men's division, so don't miss out. Uh, it's also here on ISF, so be sure to check it out. Uh, we were talking about the, uh, the new patch here, Arashi. It's just... Man, it's all about the assassins here. Uh, I think uh, we both did the the European qualifiers, and I think it's pretty similar to like come in here in here to this uh this particular patch. Uh, a lot of the assassins come through. Uh, you, you you sometimes like see a lot of these uh, sustained junglers as well, having the alpha there and everything else. But let's take a look at the today's schedule, Rashi. Oof. We're gonna be streaming some of these matches, and if you guys want some. Quick updates. These are actually updated live over at isf.gg. So you guys can go ahead and check out uh, the live stream updates because I believe some of these matches are um, either off stream or off cam. So if you guys want real time results, go over to the website. But this is going to be it, right? Uh, we're going to be kick starting it off with a couple of other countries that you, you've actually seen already uh, Argentina versus Brazil, just to name a few. And uh, I think some of these regions have shown. A lot of promise, especially in the uh, men's division as well, uh, Arashi. Uh, if you've been uh, watching, it's actually such a tight match, especially for America's B. I think there's a lot of regions surprising us again and again. I'll be honest though, there have been so many things going on that I don't quite remember which group was what. I remember just all the fights happening and all the big plot twists happening in the Land of Dawn. So, like we said, today there's going to be six matches and... I do have my eye, of course, on USA. I feel mm -hmm. like that's always everywhere everyone's oh, yeah. attention is drawn to. But that will be happening way, way later, right? We gotta mm -hmm. keep our focus on the current matches. And I feel like the first match right here, region-wise at least, right? Yeah. I I've seen the Argentinian and Brazilian region uh, occasionally throughout the years. I, I feel like they have uh, quite interesting developments in their own region. And I do feel like they show a bit of promise. So mm -hmm. I think it's a great matchup right here to start off this sequence of uh, of matches as the first match between Argentina and Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the two teams that also extended, if I believe, in the group stage of the male division. Uh, it extended to all the way till game number three, and eventually it was Argentina that uh, took. Uh, the spot, of course, uh, going to WEC this year. And again, you guys can check that all out at isf.gg. Coming in here today, Arashi, anything that you are looking forward to see now that we're, we're you know, it's it's no longer the main men's division. It's actually going to be the women's here. We're going to kick started off with, of course, Argentina versus Brazil here with a classic BO3. As I was saying, I feel like Argentina has this way of playing that's a bit more... I would say like textbook, right? Systematic. That's the the image at least I get from this region. Whereas for Brazil, I feel like they have a lot more uh I don't know, improvisations. They do things on the fly oftentimes. And it's a very high risk, high reward type of play style. So I feel like it's a bit of a contrast between the two. So in that sense, because there is contrast, it's interesting to be to see to actually see from the drafting phase at least, what kind of comp compositions are gonna show up and how are both these teams gonna try and make it work. Right? Because against a team that, that's kind of unpredictable, like Brazil, I feel like you gotta be a bit more careful in your own way. But if you're already a team that is playing a lot more textbook, a lot more systematic by default, how far, how much more safe can you get, right? And sometimes teams are kind of prone to just taking it a bit too seriously and kind of getting in their own heads. So I feel like that's gonna be the challenge here for Argentina. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, they've already, their ma male division has already taken up the uh, slot for WEC uh, over at Riyadh this year. So look forward to see that. But for the female division, this is going to be the first time, actually a debut match for, for almost all of the teams here. Because we haven't seen any of them just yet. Maybe you guys have seen them in some of your local tournaments over at uh, your own country, right? And uh, I think for Argentina and Brazil, uh, these countries are pretty strong when it comes to, of course, MLBB. Uh, developing region as well uh, they've hosted a couple of like uh, MPLs respectively so I think uh, we could expect to see a lot of like really good things here for for the women's division and I honestly can't wait to see like um, what these women will bring out like I, I don't know Arashi like you you sometimes see like the women's division in Indo like what is that mm -hmm. like is it is it exactly the same like do they stick with the meta but you know before that let's take a look at the lineup here of Argentina this is MLBB women's by the way for the Americas regional qualifiers you got Brenda Neosita Carranza Neolita Can Catanita Munoz you got Maria Riza Nunez Juliana Ms. Godoy and finally uh, Hilda Nelina Meira who's gonna be playing here for Argentina Right, the full five stack right here. And on that question, Kim, about the meta, did they go with the same kind of strats? I think there's gonna be a bit of difference. All right, because of course the play styles, the mindsets behind the whole thing is quite different. And technically, as far as my own region, the coaches are also usually the same coaches, but they have their own way of thinking when it comes to the women's scene. You see coaches from the men's scene kind of go with a different strategy once they are put in the shoes of a, of a coach in the women's scene. So I think it's going to be quite interesting developments, as I was saying. And I do wonder, right? I've been seeing a lot of Thunderbolts in the past week, man. Again and oh, again. Yeah. Almost every single role. If the hero can be operated with a Thunderbolt, I've seen a lot of people just go at it, man. Just immediately rush the Thunderbolt, whichever role they're in, even if you're a roamer, right? So I think that's something that is kind of rising in popularity. And I feel like with games potentially dragging out right now, uh, going into the later stages, those kind of items that can give you stacks, that can allow to uh, allow you to kind of scale even better, are quite dangerous here. So I think that's gonna definitely show up in today's matches. Yeah, I'm actually also curious if uh, you know the women's division is comfortable with this new meta because we we're talking about a heavy. Um, I would say it's it's very centered towards the junglers these days. You see heavy priority on you know assassins like the Ling, Hayabusa. So um, I think uh, for the previous patch, a lot of people are pretty much comfortable with the you know the Fredrin and the Barretts. So I don't know if this is the, gonna be the same case here. Like, are there gonna be like assassins versus assassins? Are we gonna see like some heavy sustain here? But yeah, I mean this is Argentina that you're talking about. We're gonna be seeing the lineup of Brazil in just a little bit. If you guys want a, a few more updates. Uh, Again, if you just tune into the live stream, it's IASF.gg for real-time updates. So, do you think Arashi, uh, like, I mean, in, in the female scene in Indonesia, is it the same case? Like, now we're, we're heading into the Assassin meta, are they also kind of, like, going that same route? Or are, you know, are the women a bit more comfortable with, like, uh, the sustained meta? Well, before we get into that, we got to talk about... We're also from Brazil, right here, Kim. Yeah, you want to take a take a crack at the pronunciations? Oh wow! So so I actually did the pronunciation right for Argentina. Hopefully I did. But uh, let's take a look at Brazil's lineup here. You got Luciana, Angelis Bulacha, uh, Goncalves. You got Marie Aslan Cutie, Mezalira. You got Rebecca Hybridy Chen. You got Lace Lala Land. Ooh, that movie. Mad okay. uh, Madureira. And finally, you got Jov. Gioviana, Caria da Silva. Uh, these names are quite familiar to some of you guys who have been following the uh, female MLBB scene. This is, I believe, uh, this, the roster that they've uh, fielded, especially back in uh, MWI uh, this year. Just, uh, just actually, I think a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the same uh, team that will be playing here for Brazil. So it's no stranger that I think uh, some of these uh, players have already gone up uh, in the world stage. So. You guys might have seen them play and now they are fighting for the spot obviously to go to WEC as well. And okay, that's gonna show that there is gonna be an experience behind their gameplay, their playstyle right here. And I feel like connecting that to your question, Kim, about the assassins, I feel like whichever scene you're in, women's or men's, I feel like the assassins definitely have risen in popularity and in effectiveness as well. That's why you're seeing them pop up so often. But I do feel like, in general, a, a more aggressive approach, the more experienced a team is, I feel like, in the women's scene so far, the more aggressive they can get. 
because now oh, they're yeah. trying to see they're starting to see all these loopholes all of these opportunities that they can kind of try and use to try and get an advantage and the best way of doing so is having a strong early game lineup that allows you to contest those objectives that allows you to kind of make those aggressive moves and take advantage of the unpreparedness of your opponents so i feel like assassins will definitely show up uh, but if it's not an assassin i feel like it's gonna be a fighter still and even oh, though yeah. it's even though it's going to be a fighter, it won't be the same kind of sustained meta. I feel like it's going to be an aggressive fighter that wants to move forward and be aggressive. Yeah, I think uh, speaking of the fighters, uh, the, the ones that we've seen, if you guys have been following for the previous days, it has always been about the alpha in the jungle mm. if uh, you know all of the assassins are out right like but most of the time you see that up in the palace you got the fanny you got the hayabusa almost automatically there the chip is almost all the time never open for for people to take in so um there has to be something else right like especially once the assassins are all out of the picture there has to be something uh that still kind of remains a lot of people li like to argue that okay utility is already gone uh yeah but it's dead we no longer have utility we're all about the assassins mm. right now it's all about the sky piercers all about the early game i don't know rashi do, do you agree with that like do, do you feel like you know the tank meta is already out of the picture or do you think it's still pretty much viable now so yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking it depends on what you're talking about specifically, right? Because I'm hearing tank meta, sustain meta, it depends, right? If you are talking about just fighters in the jungle that have sustain, that have damage that are tankier, I feel like they are still very much viable, right? We talked about the, the rise in popularity of the Thunderbelt. Fighters are absolutely loving the potential of having this item that allows them to just be uh, as aggressive as possible, that allows them to just go in aggressively and proc that uh, Thunderbelt again and again. So I feel like it can still very much be be viable, but it depends on the execution, right? And if you want to try and go for uh, a tankier type of fighter, that's fine. But if you really want to do so with the jungle being such a priority, then that jungler kind of needs a lot of backup. So th that means that whenever they're clearing, you might want to help out and try and help him clear faster. Whenever he has so many free time, you want to help out the jungler uh, for the ganks and for the invades, perhaps, to the, op the opposing side. So in that, in that sense, even though your jungler isn't really a hard farmer that really needs to get all these items and start to snowball, you can still get him a bit of, uh, get the jungler kind of ahead, and that can allow the other lanes to benefit from the situation. And I think that's where you can try and make that, uh, that fighter uh, meta still work. But of course, uh, with the Sky Piercer being so lethal right now, with the potential to snowball, I feel like depending on how confident you are with your drafting, I feel like the Assassin meta kind of has more potential. Higher highs but lower lows at this point in time. Yeah, I think uh, me and Naisu were talking about this uh, over on the stream the other day that there's a possibility that you can end the match. That's how fast you can snowball with an assassin. Say you, you pick up a Hayabusa, you pick up a Ling, you're able to snowball with it and right after the first floor, you can actually be able to end the game, right? Like as compared to like, you know, the previous pa previous patches ago with, uh, you know, the tank junglers, utility junglers, it's uh, more, you know, fleshed out and it's it's more about like letting the gold laner shine. But now it's it's all about the jungler. And do you, would you say that's actually the most important role right Right now a role that has like heavy priority because that seems to be the case in the drafting phase you see a lot of these things are being prioritized hayabusa even and i think it's no different no stranger to uh the drafting that we've seen in the european regional qualifiers there's also a heavy mm -hmm. center around the uh, roger here in this particular region as well i think that's definitely the case man the fact that you kind of set the tempo for your team uh if your jungle is clearing everything then your jungler is going to be in the lanes impacting everything else as well and if your jungler is stuck clearing then you're stuck kind of protecting your jungler and waiting around so i feel like we talked about how the laners have been so impactful in the exp lane in the mid lane or even the roaming position you can go all across the map and try and make plays there but i feel like they're important because they kind of are associated with the jungler. I think that's why it's just so important right now. How fast you clear your buffs, how aggressive you can be in the early game, and how fast can you really start to use that aggressive pressure to try and get a lead, and more importantly, try and use that advantage to try and get the neutral objectives. That's what I think a lot of teams are just playing for right now. And in that sense, of course, Assassins has more potential there. 
But I think that's where the drafts come in handy, right? You want to get an assassin, that's cool. But who are you going to pair up the assassin with? Is it going oh, yeah. to be a utility roamer? Is it going to be an aggressive roamer that maybe won't help you with a... Let's say an Angela Ling as utility. Maybe yeah. it won't be a utility roamer like an Angela. But if it's something, you know, aggressive, uh, as, an, as a very quick example, like a Franco, then, you know, once you start snowballing, then that Franco can kind of enable you in a different way that the Angela does. So the drafting phase now becomes a lot more interesting because a lot of things are just less default now. I think uh, we see that pairing often, right? Angela Ling, sometimes like a, M a Matilda would pop up even with the assassins, but never uh, an Estes already. I mean, usually that's the case. Right? It's going to be so difficult to chase up against those those high utility, high mobility heroes. Ling, Fanny even. So um, I think there's also a shift in that. The the it, it became like more of like CC heavy when it comes to uh, like the roamers. We see a lot of the Minotaur shining, the Tigreal even coming into play here. And and I think mm. uh, apart from all of that, like there also has to be like a variety of gold laners that I've seen this patch, Arashi. I mean, we're talking about Ruby Gold. We're talking about the Zas Gold that we, we've actually seen. And it's not the usual uh, contemporary marksmen that you'd see in the lane, right? Like you, you were expecting to see, you know, marksman versus marksman matchup. Pretty much like the last patch, but now we're talking about either mages that go there. You have like uh, fighters that can really sustain the lane. Also, it's all about um, you know winning the lane here for for the gold lane. Oh. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, Arashi lost you a little bit there. We did catch Mirko. You guys can catch him over at the other stream, by the way. Sup, Mirko. He's going to be casting, of course, the uh, male division. That's going to be the final few matches that you're going to be seeing uh, for today's stream. So we're going to be having two streams here today. One over here with me and Arashi over at the women's and then later on you have Mirko and Naisu over on the other side we're gonna be waiting for Arashi to come back but for now it is all about me the draft is gonna start in just a little bit I'm personally really excited because I'm one to follow a lot of like female MLBB so let's head over into the draft in just a little bit and there you go for a while Mirko actually popped up and I was like Ara Mirko as our cosplay as Arashi for a little bit there. So welcome back. Uh, we are gonna be starting the drafting phase in just a little bit. So I am actually really excited to see um, what the priority is, what the playstyle is gonna be. But there you have it. The draft is up here. Argentina gonna be a blue side. Brazil on the red side. Uh, seems like uh, it's a, a lot of standard bands here. I think the only one that's a bit different is going to be the Yu song that uh, sometimes is a selected ban or targeted ban here by the teams you have you still have a lot of these assassins open so uh, again i'm not so sure if these ladies are are comfortable using that but the ling the fanny hayabusa these are all open up for grabs here and even the roger uh that seems to be a priority pick for a lot of teams now you have to wonder with leaving up so many assassins available are they trying to fight fire with fire is that the idea right to just try and go for a mechanical showdown here in the jungle or do these teams have like a, a hidden solution for the assassin problem? Do they want to go for a hot control oh, heavy kind of roamer? Or do they want to try and make sure that the, their mid lane is so much more solid? Because for Brazil, they ban with the Zask and the Sushin. And those are two laners right now. It can be very active, very up close and personal too, while still being survivable. So they let go of the Roger, but what do they want to get in exchange, right? Terizla and wow. Minotaur, so they're already is doubling down on the uh -huh. teamfight presence on the all-in. But again, when it comes to assassins, both teams can still really bring an assassin in right here without really messing up the composition too far. Yeah, actually, it's a flexible pick here for the Roger. That that 
you can definitely have and every single team really loves to abuse that fact and they usually pick it up in the first phase usually the answer is uh you know you want to pick up the ruby onto the lane but this time they are going to be answering out with some setups and since there's a lot of team fight potential here for brazil they pick up the valentina as well to kind of uh, pick up those additional cc's for the team brazil now they're gonna have to lock in uh, their pick here maybe go for a mid laner pick here as well since a lot of them are already out for the count uh, the valentina's over on the other side i'm thinking something along the lines of uh you know mage that can be sustainable in team fights lilia i always uh put this out <laughs> because you definitely need long. that they're gonna Ooh. maybe pick up the mage in the second phase instead go for the carry here a little bit straightforward though coming out from brazil well, technically, with all the protection available, the carry is kind of safe-ish. But with the Valentina available to steal away some of these big teamfight ultimates, and with the Grok here and a Roger, I feel like when it comes to snowballing, Argentina definitely has uh, more ways to do so. They can shift this Roger into the jungle. And if you go with a Roger jungle right here for Argentina, then you have a combo of a very fast, clear, aggressive jungle and a roamer that can help with the mid lane clear to allow the Valentina to help the Roger out. And you have a, jung a, a roamer that can kind of be such a nuisance to your opposing team's jungler, you can potentially steal away some of the buffs even using the power of nature. So I think Argentina are definitely the ones with a, with a clearer plan in mind. But that means that Brazil now has a chance to be a bit more adaptive and maybe shift a bit of their focus in the drafting phase to kind of uh, counter the strategy from Argentina, which is a bit more visible from the first three picks. No, oh, I'm actually surprised that they banned away the Julian here in the second phase as well as the Faramis. I mean, usually if you uh, have the Valentina in your hands, you kind of want to get the the Faramis as ultimate as well to have those extended team fights. They take away the Julian still anticipating the fact that this is going to be a Roger that uh, might be in the gold lane. But recently, uh, in the Americas qualifiers, we've seen a lot of the Roger actually being put into the jungle instead. They lo uh, take away the Exborg as well for Brazil here to, to counter out the, the possibility of having that in the jungle as well. Great, great CC. <laughs> great way to engage in team fights and the true damage. Like what we were we were saying, right? Which leaves the option here for, um, you know, if it's fighter junglers, usually the one that comes top of mind is definitely the alpha. Not sure if Brazil wants to go that route or maybe go for either a classic friendly, but they, they're kind of setting up for for a good front to back here. I mean, if they're going to go for the mid laner pick here next, maybe, uh, maybe if they're going to go for an assassin, maybe perhaps hide that for the last pick so they can kind of adjust to what Argentina wants. Well, that's exactly what they do. They go for the Aurora here, so tripling down even on the crowd control. And technically, with all the dive available for Argentina, this is a great pick. Because if they want all the crowd control and burst and utility still, the Lilia can be an option if you still want that survivability. But for the Aurora, you also have a built-in uh, built like second chance at life. And technically, you're less vulnerable because you have a Minotaur and Terizla that can kind of sit right on top of it and ensure that you don't get taken out almost immediately. So Brazil still, though, are still very much immobile, right? So if Argentina comes out with a lot of catch potential, a lot of ways to slow down the members of Brazil, maybe, and play for a chase, a back and forth style, I feel like it could be quite dangerous here for Brazil. Okay, the Martis does pop up from time to time. They Whoa. go in for more team fights. So this is team fight after team fight. You got a Valentina to pick up the good ultimates here coming out from Brazil. So does this mean for Brazil, they're left with the option to go, you know, either head to head with the Martis, somebody that can clear as fast. I'm thinking something along the lines of still an alpha, which is open here mm -hmm. if they want to go that route. All of the assassins are still open. And I think uh, so far, Argentina we are going to be working around that fighter jungler so for brazil is it going to be assassin but looking at this i feel like a fighter like an alpha would be really good but they go for a nolan instead okay great wave clear great early game damage as well coming out from their side if they manage to pull this off but here's going to be here's the final lineup here for argentina and brazil so far what's it looking like here arashi i thought with brazil and the way they were so beefy to begin with they're gonna go for a straight front to back but i guess they're a bit concerned about the lapu lapu potentially zoning the whole back line so they go for the nolan so it's still a great assassin and more importantly it's an assassin that can still kind of combo in 
with the penalty zone, with the minion fury as well. A big engage into a fracture here. It really sealed the deal for the side of Brazil as well. And the clear is kind of comparable to the Roger. So I feel like it's a great option, but I feel like when it comes to execution in the early game, when it comes to that pressure, Argentina will have a bit more to play around with. And Brazil, at least for the first couple of levels, will be forced to play a bit more conservatively until they do reach their own power spikes and maybe go for that level four, right? Level four turtle or, you know, or skirmish in the jungle with all those big team fight ultimates. Yeah, with that being said, Arashi said it himself, we're gonna have to find out who gets that power spike first. These are two heroes that can definitely snowball, but we're heading into the land of dawn here, Arashi, for game number one, a best out of three between Argentina and Brazil, and of course, all these teams are really fighting for that one spot to Riyadh once again this year for WEC. Looking at the mid lane, you're already seeing the contest in the clear. And even with the Grok and the Power of Nature, you can see that the Minotaur, along with an Aurora, really does give Brazil a lot of wave clear to work around with. But for Argentina, they technically have like two strong sides. You can see in the gold lane, Riza is going to go for the early trades, trying to make sure that she has control over the lane. And that is what Argentina can use later on. Wow, okay, and the, both, both these gold laners are rocking a Purify. Uh, they both do have the dash out, but I would say mobility-wise, if you can kind of bait out that Purify, especially when it comes to the team fight, you can pick off these gold laners, but this is gonna be standard, right? Roger can definitely be a lane bully here up against the, the carry. You can poke the heck out of this carry, does not have that much damage yet. So I think for Riza of Argentina, she's really doing a great job to pressure out this gold lane, and I believe she's gonna be able to get that Scuttler Crab as well. Down bot, but here comes Angelus, dashing in and out again, almost getting uh, Nell and Miz there, but they are able to sustain for a little bit. Level four is gonna be hit, uh, in just a short while as uh, Kata and Miz as well rotating towards the bottom side. A lot of pressure as well over on the gold lane. For Argentina, sticking together is definitely the last thing they want to try and do right here. If they really get caught in the big combo, you saw that even in the mid lane, even before the big ultimates, there's really a lot of danger available. Both roamers now trying to clear in that mid lane, trying to reach at level 4, left alone to it, but they're not there just yet. And you can see both teams starting to make rotations towards the top side. But it seems like Argentina are going to be showing their hand first, trying to bait in the attention here. Mm -hmm. but that allows Angelis to be a bit more elusive with her positioning. Yeah, Hybridy as well. Got, getting in that level 4. Angelis getting that level 5. A level ahead up against uh, Kata. And now we're going to do that Turtle Tango. Half HP, 1-4. Oh. But there's a flicker in there by Hybridy. And the penalty zone. Kata will be able to take the Turtle though. But for the price of his life, three members down as Angelis pops in that fracture in the nick of time to take down three members of argentina they got the turtle before brazil they wow, got man. way more than that that's an insane development there i just did, did not expect all that aggression coming through from the side of argentina i thought for sure they're gonna take it a bit slow earlier on first and then maybe later on go for these skirmishes the two right, v2s yeah, hybrid where brazil won't have a, that big of an edge but He's immediately doing a good just job go zoning out the members here of Argentina, though. As we mentioned, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil have they a are lot more just way too good at these team fights, right, Rashi? I mean, happen, so you got the penalty Argentina, zone from Hybridy. You got careful. that level four way ahead of the Lapu Lapu here of Neo. That's why they were able to instantly engage in the team fights. Three minutes in, three kills already. Two of them going to Angelus. And we're talking about the level, the power spike here coming out from the Nolan. And this is it. You can kind of see just one more. He's going to hit, or she's going to hit that killing spree. A 10k lead now for Brazil. And now Kata as well. Going to get invaded here by uh, Keria and the rest of the gang. Level 5 has been reached. Flicker's not yet available though. As they are going to try to go in for the play. 40 seconds before the next turtle up top though. It is a different story. Hybridy. You're going to be forced to back away. Recall back into the base. Actually gets poked. A lot here by Neo on the Lapu Lapu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I guess, you know, we will have to wait for Arash to come back because this is way too intense for the first few minutes. Three kills for Brazil. And I think levels ahead, of course, it's really gonna matter here. Angelus, again, a level ahead here up against Kata, who's doing her very best to actually catch up. A lot of pressure being made here on the gold lane. As you can see, Angelus already putting 
or, or finding a good spot here to be able to get that turtle. Again, we might see a sandwich play happening here though. You see Neo as well rotating towards this side of the turtle to make sure that they win that. But overall to the bottom side though, Riza in trouble. Forced to use that Purify because Angelus was trying to go in for the Fracture combination alongside Aslan. But eyes on the prize here for the side of Brazil. They're gonna go for this turtle. Are you going to get worked on here by Brazil? They got a very good spot here. They can also initiate here for the side of Argentina. And here it comes. The Minoans Fury. It's still going to be Kata picking up the turtle. Nell's going to go down. Gary is the next one on the chopping board. As Aslan going to be able to pick up a double. Able to free hit everybody. Riza. Make that a triple. Unable to leave that one. And that is absolutely insane coming out from a carry five minutes into the game the positioning was absolutely insane that's why they were able to get a triple for aslan a turret to take in argentina they've been taking away these turtles but for the side of brazil man they just know how to win these team fights and for argentina now they're on a weird spot because they have the more aggressive composition but now they don't really have the resources to try and take control over the game any longer they're going to be playing or dancing to Brazil's tune. And the tune is all about those team fights, man. Like you said, Kim, every single time a team fight does break out, Brazil, with more tools around to try and swing the tides in their favor, have always been able to find the upper hand. And now, even with the early game power of Kata and Kata, Riza, and Neo to dive in the back line, how can they do that against uh, the carry, right? That runs the Purify, that gets all this protection and backup from the whole roster whenever the fights do break out. Yeah, it's honestly insane that uh, most of the time you'd expect the Minotaur here of uh, Kyria to dive in first, but it's mostly high pretty on the uh, Terizla that has been setting up the place. He's been setting up the tempo. And right after that, they just go for the follow-up here on, on Hybridity. So it's it's a double wombo combo here that Brazil is doing. And honestly, it's it's hard for Argentina to retaliate. Either the damage dealers are down, they get bursted down by Angelis, or even get taken down here by, by Aslan's carry. This is really looking scary, right, for the carry as early as the six-minute mark. This isn't the time that the carry is activated yet, but here it is, picking up a triple kill as early, even before the 10-minute mark here. Turtle's gonna be spawning in about now. That's gonna be the last Ooh. turtle up here for the side. Angelus gonna go in for Kata. Gonna chase him using the retribution in 1v1 duel here. One HP left as Angelus says, Yep, not gonna be uh, gonna go for that right now. A little bit too deep in. He she did try though, but instead they go straight for the prize. Turtle already at half HP. And with the way that they zoned Ooh. out Argentina, they will not have that power position on the turtle. Look at the aggression, man. Lala and just flickered right there to try and get a catch even to Brazil. Even though they are supposed to be playing it more conservative, with how ahead they are right now, gold-wise, it's not too significant. It's not too crazy, about 4,000 to 5,000 gold difference. But man, they're just making sure that they're using this moment of advantage of uh, Argentina just not really having control over the map. Just keep going for fights and keep going for pickoffs. And that's where... And jealous on the Nolan, it kind of really helps them out. Because if they went for a fighter or, or for a utility jungler here to try and all in on the team fight approach, then Brazil now will be kind of struggling to find advantages, to find ways to kind of surprise Argentina when it comes to that uh, ambush in the jungle. Mm -hmm. But since they do have an assassin in their hands, now Brazil have options to play along with. They can set up for big team fights or they can just set up for pickoffs. Yeah, they're always, they're always one step ahead of uh, Miz here and Nell. Both of them have the setups, and as you can see, the Valentine always, almost all the time, picks up the uh, Minoan's Fury here, but they always either get taken down first, like the, the, the hesitation coming out from the initiation. Look at that fracture damage onto Riza here. Half HP already, and this is just the 8-minute mark. You're, you don't even have the full items just yet, and this is Ooh. how much damage that you're doing? I, I can't imagine what would actually be the damage coming out here from Angelus once it reaches at least like the 10 minute mark or when she has at least like four or five un items under her belt and now if Argentina wants to go for a more of a pickoff Hybridity has a Queen's Wings available the damage reduction will mean that Argentina won't really have any ways to really punish Angelus though making the moves again and again for Brazil they just, they just play around like this and for Argentina they don't have, they just simply don't have enough damage right now to go for a pickoff. 
either on the back line or the front line. And with uh, Aslan already having the Purify still and just hanging on to it, you saw that earlier Kata was just running with the Mardis straight at the carry. And she wasn't backing away at all. That's how far ahead this carry is right here, soloing the Lord as everyone yep. just sets up a barrier here, blocking yep. everyone from Argentina from even taking a glimpse at the action. Team Barrier and Aslan just soloing that Lord. She's not even rocking a Brave Smite, right? Like, this is, I know this is the first Lord, but you know, to be able to solo it on the carrier, right? She's way ahead. In terms of the levels, I would say levels, even the itemization, after picking up that triple down bot, Risa just was not able to clap back just yet. I completely forgot about the Aurora pickup here from La La Land, right? Like, before you could even go for the engage, you either get frozen, you get immobilized for a little bit. That's why Brazil is almost all the time always ahead of these team fights that they're picking up. The Lord is marching up top here. And we talked about this, Arashi, right before the game started. Sometimes the team that just snowballs really heavy. They can actually finish up the game with just one Lord if, if they do get that wipeout. That's a big if, but we'll see if Brazil can get it happen with three big engage tools, right? With Laoland already demonstrating the willingness to flicker forwards, even though she's on a quote-unquote more vulnerable casting type of mage. This means that Brazil has sh shown their hand and shows that they can go for big fights when you least expect it. So, yeah. uh, back away. Yeah, there goes the penalty zone all the way into the base here of Argentina. Combined with the Nomoros Fury, a beautiful combination. Neo goes in for the Bravest Fighter, but it's not enough to take them down. Four members left here for the side of Argentina. They got the minion waves here for the side of Brazil. They're going to try to force oh. it. There's a lot of damage coming out here from Nell as well, so they cannot overextend. Even Riza was not able to do that. Lycan Pals has four members. Wind of Nature has been popped here by the carry by Aslan as well, just to counter out the physical damage also coming through for the side of Argentina. So there is still that respect. Another penalty zone here for Hybridi. Okay, gets stunned, gets frozen here. Ooh. Angelis gonna try to go in for the fracture, but they unable to find anything. As Brazil, they are able to take down two inhibitor turrets. Might go for the third one here down bottom. Might take it even by force here. As I'm really gonna be forced to tank up the damage. As Neo once again, still gonna get caught in between these combos coming out from Brazil. So now the base is wide open here for the side of Argentina. Brazil, they have the health dispenser, the Minotaur, the Flask of the Oasis. And on top of that, a lot of their heroes, if you notice, don't really have issues with their mana. So they can just stick around right here oh, right. in the jungle, and they can just keep staying around. And before you know it, a big fight happens, or Angelus will make her move. This is just a devastating combination of factors here. It's allow allowing Brazil to just brute force their way through, even though Argentina, they're putting up a great fight, getting Brazil low. But unless they go all in and seal the deal with kills, it just won't matter. Brazil can just rinse and repeat this. Oh man, this is this is really tough, right? Argentina's only ever picked up one kill onto Kervia at that, and now Hybridi can be forced to use in that penalty. So, and look at the Minoans' oh. fury by Nell as well. The stun coming through from the frigid red from La La Land. The shutdown comes through here for the side of Argentina, but it's still Aslan that's just free hitting everybody. Ooh. Look at all of that damage. You combine it with the freeze from Lala. That is only reason Neo left to defend this base. Brazil will force to end this one. They got Aslan locking in the tower. Will it be enough? I think it is. They got the minion waves in. Brazil starts it off real strong and kicks off the series with a 1-0. Brazil, man, that aggression. I thought that Argentina might be the one who put it off with that aggressive composition they had. But Brazil, they were just so in tune with what they were trying to do, with when they exactly they want to ramp up the aggression. If they were attempting to brute force that base take a bit too early or a bit too late, the game might have went in a different direction. But they were just so sure of their potential here. They just went straight at it, man. And Argentina, you can see the vision, the idea of what they wanted to do. But Brazil, like, absolutely denied every single thing man they won when it comes to the pressure they won when it comes to the crowd control and they win when it comes to damage output even so at this point in time once the first few fights went to the side of brazil i feel like it's almost only a matter of time because 
in theory, Brazil were the ones who were supposed to take it slow, but with that level 4 power spike, with the combos and ultimates, they don't even care about the neutral objective, right? They gave two of the turtles to the side of Argentina, but for Argentina, at what cost? They kept losing at least three members, four even right here, and against a team that kind of wants to scale like this, that wants a team yeah. fight like this, that's a bit too dangerous, man. Especially when the kills fall into the hands of Aslan on that carry that wants to go for that late game style. Yeah, I mean, if it's not uh, Angelus here, it is Aslan doing the damage. And as you can see, you know, apart from the fact that they have the heal from the Minotaur, the positioning of Aslan, right? Like, it's always almost impeccable. You see her coming in at the right time. Like, when everybody's slow, the speedy light will come through and it just dish it out. Way too much damage that you can actually expect coming out from a carry very early on. This was one of the, uh, uh, you know, attempts here of Argentina to save the base. But you know what? When you got a carry... You just lock in the base. You also got like beefy heroes to go alongside you. You have, absolutely have nothing to fear. This game ended in 13 minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, I would say in a very dominant fashion here for Brazil. They managed to be able to take uh, some kills here in the game. But most of the time, it's always either onto Korea or hybrid. Not the targets that you actually want to be taken down right because that's totally fine it's just the roamer the damage dealers are still alive and argentina almost all the time does not have the answers to kind of clap back up against the side of brazil here and it's so sad to see that uh the kata on the martis wants to be that aggressive early game jungler and to her credit she was able to get a couple of neutral yeah. objectives but if you look at the damage dealt earlier Keria on the minotaur did the almost the exact same damage numbers as Kata on the Martis. So that is definitely not how the game was planned on going for Argentina. And showing again how many team fights, how many clumped up situations were available for Brazil to take advantage of. And for Argentina, they have to try and adjust right here. If they see the same sort of composition, I feel like they have to try and find a different way. Player of the match though is going to be Aslan on the carry. Like we mentioned, supposedly the week later, up against a Roger, up against all of these dangers in the land of dawn in the team fights and yet still able to find ways to get the resources to stay alive and not even just stay alive even get ahead and and get kills in the team fights to eventually just snowball way way out of control yeah way too early actually like three four minutes into the game she's already picked up a triple kill and with that being said if you don't shut down that carry I mean, I can't believe that was even the situation, right? Like, you're going up against the Roger. Riza was able to poke her very well in the early game. But, you know, after that triple kill, it was difficult for the side of Argentina to kind of bounce back from that situation. They had to deal with Angelis. They had to deal with Aslan. And not to mention all of the setups here or the layering of uh, combinations that are just way too good. You got the Minoan's Fury. But most of the time, you see it's like hybrid -y. Setting up the plays and then Korea just jumps in, flickers in for the follow-up in Noah's Fury. It also has the, uh, the, the motivational roar that has that additional heal. So it's enough to sustain these team fights uh, that the, the side of Brazil actually wants. That's just game number one, by the way, Arashi. It's already action Jackson here for, for both of our mm -hmm. teams here for the Americas Regional Qualifiers. But for now, Arashi, we're going to have to take a quick break for all the, pl the players as well to reset before we head on to our match point between Argentina and Brazil. See you guys in a little bit. Welcome back to the Americas Regional Qualifiers. This is MLBB Women's. For this region, we just witnessed Argentina and Brazil for the very first match and it was Brazil that took it by storm 1-0 right now as Brazil will be heading to a match point here in this BO3. Still with me, Burger Kim and Arashi bringing you guys all of the action. It was, a, let's say, a very fast first game that we had completely snowball for the side of Brazil and Argentina just did not have the answers to that, right? The the wombo combo of the Terizla combined mm -hmm. with the Minoa's Fury and not to mention the scaling there of Angelus and uh, Aslan was just way too much to handle for the side of uh, Argentina. Yeah, in some ways, you really wish that Argentina had a different outcome right there. Because technically, if they were able to snowball Roger, Valentina, you know, they had tools of their own to really take this game by storm. The Mardis even, if they were able to get maybe, let's say, in a different 
timeline here that they won at the turtle fight they were able to get resets onto the martis right with the decimate again and again and they can start just diving turrets down and taking down turrets very very fast and even the the nolan right with all the elusiveness the mobility the damage if the towers are down then even the nolan can't really farm as efficiently there's a there's a chance that argentina's draft really could have worked even you know even better than what we saw but unfortunately i think brazil just read through it almost immediately and in towards the mid game they were the ones essentially saying you know what argentina we know you want to skirmish but we're gonna push s5 so often every single time that you're gonna be forced to respond to us with five members right and at that point once you're not the one in the driver's seat then you have no idea where to take the game Wow, okay, this time it's going to be uh, Brazil on the blue side right now. Immediately mm -hmm. taking away the higher Hayabusa. So they have some information here uh, for Argentina, right? Like uh, taking away some of these power picks also that really made them shine in the entire game. Korea on the Minotaur. So now they can go ahead and do this, right? Like take some of these selected target bans as compared to Argentina's over on the red side, right? You kind of have that urgency to ban away all of these like OP heroes. Uh, Juice it and Chip almost 100 percent ban rate even in the uh male division of uh, mlbb in the americas regional qualifiers too expensive to give out to the opponent especially knowing that brazil is one of the teams that is just way too good in the team fights right so th these are mm -hmm. the things that they don't want to give out uh, i'm thinking uh, something along the lines of uh you know specific target bans too terizla seems to be rising up in the ranks as well when it comes to xp lane you got that setup you got that sustainability so brazil can go ahead and you know either cripple a certain team i don't even know you did mention that was mystic kim and there you have it the terizla that usually gets picked up in the second phase which leaves the roger open actually here super flexible pick again you know brazil can just flex that roger that uh, seems to be always the Destroy. prior pick uh, the zas also Conquer. never gets uh, slipped up in the drafting phase you always put it up in the ban list knowing that it's completely op right now in the patch you have continuous damage you got sustainability brazil roger of course of course that is usually the case right it's classic roger i know you guys might have seen this several times you might get bored of it but this is the new Fredrin, the new Ling, if that is not available. It's so flexible. Uh, again, you know, you can work around the draft with this Roger. That's why it's a heavy priority. You can work around different kinds of drafts. You can play a different kind of styles even. And technically, maybe now with the changes to the items, not really as diverse. But back then, you can go with like five different item combinations here for the Roger, depending on what your team needs as well. So really is one of the most flexible, literally, in every single... Uh, every single aspect this Roger but was at Argentina now with the Julian most likely in the jungle uh, very strong very good at picking off heroes and we've seen Argentina off for that aggressive style and now with all these team fight wow. heroes like the Minotaur like the Terisla band away this might be their attempt at just capitalizing on the lack of protection that Brazil was able to use to really get ahead in game number one okay with the Kufra being the roamer here of Argentina, which means that they already have that CC, something I wouldn't say they lacked CC in game number one. It was more of, uh, I guess, Brazil had more uh, instant setups when it came to the team fight. So, Brazil, uh, do they want to go for uh, a mid laner pick? A lot of them are already out, or maybe instantly pick up their XP lane most of the time these days. Arashi, I, I was talking to some casters about this. Come on, I've been casting MOBB the entire day. It's always, mm -hmm. almost all the time, three picks in the XP lane. Eat it. You got the, uh, you got the Terizla, which is already banned away. Seeking <laughs> off, there's gonna be e the Eat it coming through. And uh, at times you see like you know a Lapu Lapu earlier for Neo. But it's all about like these three heroes, right? Instant setups. You got CC for Eat it. This is often overlook so i'm happy this is actually kind of shining here in the america's regional qualifiers um, even in the male uh division you didn't really see it much in the group stage it's only popped up in the playoffs so uh i like this uh coming out uh, from the side of brazil instant way to engage once again and then you got lala land on the uh aurora the same pick that she had in game number one and we've seen in game number one it really made it difficult for argentina to kind of dive in because of the slows uh being frozen in place by the aurora so it's a pocket pick that brazil has and they're very much comfortable with it well there's slows there's damage right aoe as well and technically the fact that all the spells kind of take some time to kind of channel and finish 
there's also like a bit of a zoning mechanism, right? You put it down, and even if it doesn't land, it kind of makes sure that your opponents can't really walk in that area, in that region. So it's definitely a strong tool that Brazil has been using. So if you talk about the big team fights, though, they have good damage output now. But when it comes to setups, I, I dare say that Argentina now still has a, the yeah. better one with the potential for the enhanced chain, as well with the, with the Tyrant's Rage, Tyrant's Revenge combo from the Kufra. But there's also the, that interaction, I believe, where the Kufra, while dashing, can kind of get cancelled by the Onward from the Edith. So I'm wondering how that was going to play out. And if this Edith is going to be in the EXP, or yeah. could it potentially maybe be, still be flexed around with Brazil and how they've been drafting here, it's not really quite as obvious, right? As compared to Argentina, who you, you know where generally most of their picks are, where, where they're going to go. At this point. The I think that the Brazil might pick up uh, another hero that can have the setup, right? Earlier they had the Minotaur, they got the Teresa, and now it's already out. They they, they themselves actually banned it away here uh, for this game. Last ban, uh, they banned away the Angel here for the second phase, which kind of makes me wonder uh, are they going to try to go for that composition as well? Like uh, Angela in the mid. And then Kufra on the roam. Uh, we've, we've actually seen that combination happen. It can be really deadly under the right hands with the right uh, combinations as well. So they're actually leaving out that open as well as the uh, the Faramis to kind of like sustain the dives that Argentina will do. They lock in the Novaria here. That is somebody I would say that that kind of has fallen out of the meta so far. Like we've seen more mm -hmm. of like uh, mostly like the Vexanas in the mid still. You got uh, the Savior and the Zaz that really is king right now when it comes to draft. But the Novaria can definitely poke the here in the team fights. And the Vision as well. And there you have it. The That is actually the CC coming through here for right. Brazil. So somebody to zone away the back lines. They have so much of that. You got the Novaria and the Claw that they need to catch. And the Aurora, I would say it's kind of like short range. Like it's not as... Uh, big of an AOE as the Novaria. Oh, now, begins. who's gonna be their gold lane? Oh, wow, okay. It finally comes through. We, we've seen this actually come out. Usually the answer to the Roger. But they go ahead and pick this up. So with the CC here, makes me... The, the, okay, so this means that it's, it's high likely that this is an Edith in the roam position, Roger in the jungle, and then Ruby in the gold lane. That makes more sense, right? Not unless like you want to switch the Roger and the Ruby up. I think in the current patch, it makes more sense that the Ruby is in the gold that will go head to head with the Claude. I I think I agree with that uh, with that judgment, Kim. I feel like it would be so weird to see the opposite of that. Oh yeah. So now for Brazil, though they they have good team fight, but they also kind of have a lot of single target damage to play around with right here. The question is that mid lane with a potentially a, a Rome Edith and a Aurora, can they match the clear of a Novaria? They can solo clear really, really fast. And with the X-Borg as well right here, man, the front line for Brazil is going to be having a, a little bit of trouble. And I think the harassment here coming in from the uh, Astral Meteor, as well as the flames coming in from Argentina, can be a problem. But with Brazil, I feel like they still have ways to really force Argentina into a fight if they kind of play that game for a bit too long. So. I do feel it's a bit more balanced, but I, I think when it comes to damage output, Brazil has a bit more of an advantage. And if you're uh, if you're predicting a clash uh, between both teams, like we saw in game number one, I think the higher damage output can be quite decisive in deciding which team comes out on top. Okay, so we're talking about single target pickoffs this time for Brazil. I think the the only form of uh, CC they would have, not the hero CC, but uh, the uh, CC crowd control, which is mm -hmm. in the form of the Ruby, the gold laner here. So we've seen so many good I Am Offended flicker plays from a lot of Ruby players here in the Americas Regional Qualifiers. And I think um, it's starting to show that, you know, this meta is all about, you know, the flexibility, putting up uh, these heroes that can sustain the lane very well as we head over into the match point here for Brazil and Argentina here for game number two. This is the first series that we're going to be having here for MLBB Women's. Let's see if it is going to be Brazil picking up that first sweep of the day or will Argentina deny them that? From the looks of things, you, you do see that for Brazil, they still have great control over the mid lane, but now with the pokes coming in uh, from Nell on that Novaria, I think it'll be a bit more difficult when it comes to moving around and mind games. And look at that. Oof. 
a lot of pokes uh, expected coming out from uh, the Novaria here of uh, Nell. That's something that they can abuse here in the early game. As you can see, Kervia forced to back away already, chunked down to more than one fourth, and even Lala Land too, is taking a brunt of the damage coming out from from Novaria's skill, and uh, that's what they can do here for Argentina. Continuously pressure out the lanes here onto mid, and not to mention even that XP lane matchup. It's gonna be hard to go head to head with the X port down bottom though. Riza. Hit that Ooh. level 3 a little bit too deep and has already used in the Purify. BMI all the way back and now Miz gonna try to find in the set of play. Angelus is slow so they're not gonna commit to that. Hybridi as well forced to use that Vengeance. The uh, Firaga armor has been popped up in the nick of time. No casualties just yet up top but will Nell actually find it here up against Hybridi as you see Kiria doing her very best as well to make sure that Hybridi is up alive in this lane but losing Ooh. dreams though. Goes in, tries to go for the enhanced stage. I pretty forced down real Ooh. low. Is not even able to get in that last XP lane card. So that itself, Argentina has already win, won the power position. Going straight for this turtle. And this is a Julia that you're talking about. It can really chunk down this turtle real fast. One fourth HP. Angelus is a little bit too far. It's going to be Argentina picking up the first turtle of the game. Great moves from Argentina to try and get control, and now Miz makes the play. Okay, Miz gonna go in for the bouncing ball there. He's able to catch two though, uh, but gets caught in between the pokes coming out from Nell. Oh, so the damage is already there, but not enough just yet to take them down. And as you can see, right after the turtle take, level four is going to be uh, going to the side of Argentina. The mid laner and roamer here of Brazil hasn't even hit that level 4 just yet. For La La Land, it has hit just now. So you can see the uh, difference as well when it comes to the XP. And for the damage dealt, look at that. Nell on the Novaria. I'm not even surprised if this is a uh, Novaria with uh, an impure rage rocking the assassin emblem to have that additional penetration. Look at the damage coming out. 7,700 already. Three minutes in. That that's already too much. I, I can't I can't even imagine when it reaches the uh, at least like five minute mark when Nell has more items here. It's gonna hurt here for for the pokes coming out from this Novaria. I mean, it already hurts for sure. Argentina, they can just have more damage, but look at this knockoff, the combo coming from Brazil, punishing immediately first blood. Oh, there's the first blood that they were looking for. It's gonna be Brazil drawing that. The last insanity comes through as Korea will be taken down there. Here comes Aslan. Gonna try to make in the play here, Angelus. Basic attacks come through CC. Hybridy forced to use the Vengeance as well to counter out Ooh. the damage, but Nell, man, it is getting really scary here. The pokes from the Novara and it seems to be working well because if you think about it there's really no hard heavy there's no heavy front line here for the side of Brazil well you have the Edith you have the Ruby but you know somebody like a Minotaur earlier in game number one right that is somebody that, that can take the hits but for this right it is mostly like hybrid so the the damage coming out from the Novarius pokes it'll really come through here I think the poke is really what really matters, right? Because technically, Lucy Dreams can also help out with the long distance uh, aggression. And Brazil, if they can get a, a decisive fight like they saw, like we saw earlier, without a back and forth, they can really do a lot of damage and be a real threat. But look at Neo, man, punishing Brazil overall. Uh huh. Hybridy gonna try to make in the place here. Dives right in with a curtain call. It's gonna be Lucid Dreams taking down Korea with the Lord to take in here as well for the side of Argentina. They are on the lead right now, 12k, and it seems like the scaling will also work towards their favor if you think about it. They got a Claude, they got a Novaria that will also work well in the early game. And right now, Brazil is really struggling when it comes to these team fights, right? Like, you got the, the last insanity here that they have to deal with, plus Miz is almost all the time willing to take in these dives, go for the bouncing ball just to ensure that Brazil is put into place. The only real big difference is later on, Keria will have a lot more damage to swing around being on that Edith. But we'll have to wait and see if that happens. Because if you look at the items here, it's still not going for a bit of an aggressive style. It's just all oh, defensive. No. And look at this dive. Wow, the enhanced chase come through. Lala Land able to get the three members there with the frigid breath. And of course, the instant winter crown. It's just going to buy her some time, but not enough as Lucid Dreams. Picks up the kill with the Julian as the enhanced chains come through. And what I like ab about uh, what Brazil is doing here is they're just going to be exchanging the turrets. They know for a fact that these team fights are going to be won by Argentina. So they're going to take as much neutral objectives as they can. Nell 
forced to defend that one half HP already. Conceal has been used to just go away from the team fight. Lucid Dreams flickers out from Korea to be able to get back into safety. A little bit too close for comfort here, but the damage, the uh, CC can be felt. I really deleted in an instant there by the enhanced shades of Lucid Dreams. And this is exactly the reason why the Julian is just shining in this current patch. One of the top junglers that we have so far. Especially in this particular game with the tankier members instead of Brazil. Even their quote-unquote assassin uh, jungler, Angelus, is on a Roger that's a lot beefier compared to the other more vulnerable, aggressive heroes in the jungle. So when you have the burst potential of the Julian and the Novaria combined, with the true damage as well from the uh, Exborg, that's a lot of damage. Look at that, Korea makes the first move, pops the Primal Wrath. Yep, they have so much peel here for the side of Argentina. Even Korea is forced to back away. There's the last insanity flicker in from Neo to get the kill onto Korea. Oh. And now we see the Astral Echo from the backside. I'm really gonna try to go in for Lucid Dreams, but get bursted down there. And the Blazing Duet to take down Angelus to add up to all of the damage. Aslan right now is gonna be able to sustain. Everybody's pretty low here. He gets the shutdown, but Neo still claps back here with the kill. It's a wipeout for Brazil. Argentina showing us that they are not willing to go down without a fight here seven minutes in they are on the lead and they are going to be able to take this last turtle of the game as well lucid dreams even going for the feather here knowing that the burst damage is great but later on the dps is what needs to be augmented to ensure these tankier members from brazil kind of get put under control but look at this outplay though oh wow the frigid breath here from uh, la la land just instantly takes down Riza there. And that's just the beauty of it here coming out from, from La La Land, right? That they, she just needs somebody to set things up here. You got the onwards. Maybe even the I am offended. You can get a good combination like that. But, you know, when it comes to over the overall picture here, the Novaria still has a whole lot more range if you think about it. And for, for Brazil, they're just going to have to wait for the, the chance that Argentina will go in for these dives and they can just go in for the punish right now. Make and miss and make them pay is a common saying in a different sport. But for Brazil, that's what they have to do right here. They need to make sure that Argentina uses the bulk of their attention and ultimate on something else before they capitalize, especially when they are already behind a very small amount in the grand scheme of things, 2,000 gold. But it's still a very significant factor right here if they're trying to think of how to win out in the fight. And they have to try and find ways to withstand the initial burst damage. Because if you think about it, right? Once the members of Argentina has used most of their ultimates, the Enhanced Sickle or Enhanced uh, Chain or the Blazing Duet or the Astral the astral Sphere, right? There's so many yeah. burst damage sources from the side of Argentina. But if they don't land, Brazil has a lot more DPS. They have a lot more consistent damage. And that's the big factor that they have against Argentina right now. If they can initially maybe force Argentina to use a lot of those spells on maybe one person and not on the whole squad, then maybe even with a man disadvantage, there's a chance it can kind of turn it around and go for a fight. But they need to try and get some control on the lanes first. Yeah, the, they have to make the, the waves move here right before the Lord, the first Lord comes up. And obviously, Argentina is going to have a much better position there knowing that the mid tower is already gone here for the side of Brazil. They're going to try to go in and blitz the Lord here. They got the Claude here. They got the Lucid Dreams on the Julian. So it is going to be easy take down here. Miz, okay, Ooh. he finds in one. They stun down Lucid Dreams here. He seems to be the target. Blazing Duet there onto Korea in the back side. There comes some Frigid Breath. And finally, Lucid Dreams goes down. It is going to be a one-for-one -one trade. This time, Brazil Ooh. claps back. But Riza, though, gets spotted out there by Hybrid. They have to do these isolated takedowns to be able to win in the team fights. Other than that, it is going to be the true damage coming out. There's the last insanity. Aslan be able to stay in for a little oh. bit. Neo does not have the Firaga armor right now. She's going to be able to lifesteal the heck out of it. But Neo is going to keep on doing that, right? Flickers all the way in to get the killing spree here. They still have the Lord to boot as Hybridi. Going to be forced to use the Vengeance here as well to zone away the back lines. But girl, you are alone as Neo just instantly pops up that Firaga armor. Or last Insanity once again as long as it's up to be able to get the kill and punish Brazil. A respectable attempt from Aslan though, moving towards the wave and the Lord, they have more targets to kind of recover her HP from. 
kind of bought some time for both teams to kind of send reinforcements. Unfortunately, Argentina, they're just around the map a bit faster compared to Brazil because they are on the back foot. And with the Empowered Waves still making their way around the map, I feel like Argentina can still take a couple more turrets down right here. A quick item check shows that, never mind, he, Neo gets jumped on. Yep, uh, he does not. She does not have that immortality. For now, I think all of their resources are focused on trying to take Neo down. The radiant armor is here as well. The enhanced shades come through here for Lucid, but not enough to take them down. They go all the way in. They get stunned. They get frozen here by the frigid. But Neo finally gets shut down there. But it took four members to take her down, and they definitely needed that swing coming out from that shutdown. Right? Like it should go to the side of Brazil here, giving them a little bit more space. As you can see, the lead is uh, going back to like at least just 2k right now because earlier Argentina was way ahead so they get some clapbacks here right before the Lord Neo is proving to be such a nuisance here with the x -Borg. her presence can definitely be felt as compared to earlier in game number one with the Lapu Lapu right like she dives in but there's just way too much CC from the side of Brazil so she was not able to set things up here for the play as compared to the x board you kind of keep on wanting to move forward here knowing that you got the true damage here with the flames uh coming out from your side so just abusing that brave smite to its fullest potential 28 seconds in let's take a look at the damage dealt here it is actually surprisingly neo that is the one that's dishing out the most damage here this is not even the gold lane 40,900, and that's true damage for you Exactly, man. It's true damage against a bunch of fighters, right? Because technically the Ruby and the Roger are both fighters too. That's why it's such a difficult time for Brazil to move forward without losing too much uh, HP. But on the grand scheme of things, they sacrifice one turret in order to get two shutdowns and a turret of their own. Conceal play now. What will they be play? off? Okay, just to move towards the side here of this Lord, but the uh, Argentina. I think they have that information. They were able to spot them out here. So they can perhaps make a play here with Miz. But now Neo, again, zoning out the members here of the side of Brazil. She is tanky, so it's not going to be easy to take her down. And Brazil knows that very well. Korea, though, might get caught out here. Forced to flicker out and use in the Primal Wrath. But with the Blazing Duet, there is no escape from the burst damage. Oh. But right now, they can clap back here. Losing Dreams gets caught in between the frigid breath here of La La Land. I am offended. Oh, Teresa as well. That's going to be two members down when we thought that Argentina had the power position Brazil just was able to clap back at that all care of the setups that they had in La La Land with the beautifully timed frigid breath there with the Aurora they were able to get the crucial kills onto Lucid Dreams and Reason oh. now they can go in look at that knock up look at that stun set up onto three they're able to sustain here Asa's gonna be the one to fall but look at the damage coming out from Angelus the basic attacks she's able to sustain goes in and out will form out as well so she's not gonna go for more as Argentina they are still able to defend this one. Two members down though a hefty price to pay but for Brazil they got what they wanted they got that first enhanced lord of the game man so unfortunate for both teams the fact that argentina were initially the ones surprising brazil and they got the advantage and then they lost both uh, the claude and the novaria and look at this though Yep, uh, there you go. Blazing to it again onto the backside. Everybody's gonna fall. And now with the post coming out from Nels, Astro Recall, they're gonna be able to melt down that Lord instantly. But for Brazil, they are making their way towards the mid side. Gonna try to go and head and get this tower. Korea forced to pop in that primal threat a little bit too early. Last insanity there from Neo. She's gonna be able to sustain, but then again, there's so much pokes from the backside. She is still alive and kicking here and eat it after all no casualties just yet but the damage has been done here arashi brazil has taken at least or equalized the turret takes something that argentina has been taking from them for the past few minutes it's only the inhibitors left for them but at least after this first enhanced lord brazil is at least able to get some breathing room here well if you're looking at the items real quick right here you look at the reduction actually there's only the Dominance Ice available for the side of Argentina to really curb the regeneration. I mean, there's three War Axes in the inventory of Brazil, so they gotta maybe put more emphasis on that for sure. But right here, I feel like it's all about those one single crazy moment here. And it's not about the positioning in the fight, it's about the positioning once uh, uh, before the fight, when it's in the setup. That is where the bulk of the game-changing, momentum-swinging plays have been made. We're looking at the damage dealt though 
for Argentina, it's just the, the ex work in Novaria. And for the side of Brazil, it's definitely La La Land, who's been finding these crazy moments to play the Aurora like an assassin, right? To try and get her hands onto the Claude and the Novaria somehow, some way. I mean, to think that you you're, you only have the flicker out for the mobility and for the side of Argentina, there's just, you know, way too many heroes that she can get caught in between, right? Thus getting sandwiched in between either the last insanity, the enhanced chain, and even the uh, Tyrant's Revenge here coming out from Miz. So the fact that she is able to pull these nice rigid glazier moves, that really kind of stuns the members here of Argentina. And Brazil can Ooh. actually use that to counter retaliate here five seconds before the next enhanced lord of this game comes through the concealed play comes oh. through we see high ready as well able to find and lose it dreams here right before the lord and impeccable timing again as miss now gonna be forced to back away nell is also dishing out a lot of the damage here from the astral recall this is the time for brazil to go for the lord before argentina they're gonna not gonna let this up without a fight they got neo they got miss they also got the blazing duet here of riza to dish at a whole lot of damage Ooh. here. And speaking of, it's going to be the Blazing Duet. The instant winter crowd here for Lala Land flickers out. But it's going to be Nell picking up the killing spree here. They've used up all of their resources here right now. They're still in some defense here. As I, Brittany, what is going on here? Trying to zone away the backlines, but instead gets outplayed, outclassed there by four members of Argentina. And to think the conceal play has been made earlier, we thought that Brazil might have had this one once again after that takedown onto Lucid Dreams. But now, it is actually going to be Brazil just giving away this Lord to the side of Argentina. Especially with La La Land, the tip of their spear taken out by Argentina. That is not a fight they want to take. And the big part, the big problem there, right before that Lord fight breaks out, is that Argentina found the Holy Crystal in the inventory of Nell. So the power spike was absolutely massive right before the fight even begins. And Neo also picks up Sea Halberd. So if Brazil were getting away with plays due to the regeneration and healing, let's say from the CC, uh, by, by the Roger, by the Primal Wrath even, there's just so many healing tools that Brazil were trying to abuse. And it was all negated by the Sea Halberd built by Neo. So now they are in a defensive situation and they don't have a lot of range to play around with. So they got to get creative right here. Whilst Argentina, they can just do what they do best. What they've been doing is go for the poke, man. Oh yeah, the pokes, even the last insanity is oh! dealing too much damage. He got the back lights down as well. Neo gets the shutdown. And now the enhanced chase come through the I am offended. All the way to the base, but it is not going to be enough. They are still able to sustain here for Argentina. What is going on, Hybrid? Gonna be forced to take the brother of the damage. It's now only Korea left to defend the base. I don't think it's gonna be an easy task. They're gonna be locking it in as Argentina gonna force out a game number three here for the series. Argentina striking back, showing again the adaptation immediately. You want team fights? Well, we ain't giving you any team fights. Not without big moments beforehand. The fact that they have all the poke damage, they have all the information tools, the astral echo even to really just show off, open up the whole map. Brazil was just struggling to find a way in. They had to go and make crazy flanks, crazy unpredictable plays to just get a simple pickoff. Despite the fact that they do have a lot of the same con control tools, AOE tools, that they were able to use so effectively in game number one. The fact that Argentina were just being so much more elusive just allows them to pick up fights that they know they can win, unless, of course, they do get caught off guard. Here are some of the highlights from game number two right there. And you can see that both teams had great ideas with the trading, with the priority uh, to the neutral objective and how they want to rotate around the map. It's just a, a great show from both these teams. But in the end, I, I feel like the, the deck is kind of stacked against Brazil. Because Argentina, they can just play the default game. And if they don't have to, they don't have to do anything too crazy, come out on top. Whereas Brazil, they are almost required to make a play happen before they can even get any kind of success in the land of dawn and that in the end becomes the main factor that kind of gets even worse the longer the game goes right because there's more and more fights that argentina can win basically by default yeah i mean you've seen it right onto the bottom side it took so much just to take one member down uh from the side of argentina and the biggest problem here too was a uh, neo 
Like uh, most of the time, he's she's not actually afraid to use in those flickers, to, uh, just to get a kill, making sure that uh, her team actually gets in the upper hand. And what was really hard too was the pokes, right? Apart from the true damage that was already being dished out here by Neo, and uh, at times you see like Nell, right, uh, being the target here for for Angelus, but almost all the time, I don't think uh, Nell was able to suffer any casualties here in this entire game. She was never picked off here. And all he needed to do was just alley up from the backside, just pop in that Astral Recall. There were some attempts here from Hybridy though onto Nell, right? Like she was trying to zone them out, but with Nell being covered, it was such a difficult task. The last insanity was also something that they had to consider here. Massive chain CC this time from Argentina. That was a nice tug in coming out from Aslan from the final game. But with the last... Last insanity, the Firaga armor. It's not going to be easy to take down the front line here of Argentina. And not to mention Nell as well. Even though she's down low, nobody is able to touch her in this entire game. A show of dominance here from Argentina. A couple of clapbacks here from Brazil. But ultimately, it is going to be Argentina finally taking the victory here for game number two. And I would say... a. A matchup that is longer than expected. Like 18 minutes and 43 seconds. You usually see the matches end 15 seconds or even less. But this is a little bit longer. But still yielded the results that Argentina wanted. Look at the damage from Nell and Neo, right? The fact that Neo isn't really a long-range hero. But also creeping up when it comes to the damage numbers. Riza hasn't even been, even been forced to kind of step up to the plate and do the damage, right? The damage, the poke from the Novaria and Expert were enough that the occasional blazing duet from Riza on the Claude is enough to swing the fight completely in their favor too. And if you look at the side for Brazil, I mean, it's all La La Land and Hybridy trying their best to try and find ways to the backline, but you can only surprise Argentina so many times before they kind of catch on to your patterns. So soon, we're going to take a look at the MVP mm -hmm. for yep. this game, and I need to wonder who it's going to be. Uh, I feel like it's gonna have to be Nell, right? Like, completely untouchable in this entire game. And come on, look at that damage. That is a damage coming out from the, a gold laner. I think the, the one that had this most damage was in the men's division for a gold laner. So this is something, um, you know, we've already seen uh, a couple of the, the damage output coming out from Nell in the early game, right? Like, she was still the one dishing out a lot of these poke damages coming out from the Astral Recall. And eventually, like what I mentioned, when she got in the Divine Glaive, got in that Holy Crystal, it was really so hard, right? Like, she doesn't even have the Sky Pierce. She can take down anybody with the Astral Recall, and not to mention all of the vision that she has provided all throughout the entire game. I mean, you can't argue with that. Part of the reason why it's just so difficult is the slows, is the vision game coming in from the Novaria. And of course, that allows the Kufra as well to just stay elusive. And you're seeing a lot of combos happen purely because Novaria kind of exposed everyone first. So I think it's a great adjustment. We've seen that Argentina definitely aren't outclassed. It's all about the planning and the adjustment. And there is one more game, Kim. Mm -hmm. But before that, mm -hmm. we'll take a short break right here. A couple of minutes just to get our thoughts together and for the teams to prepare as well. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the ISF America's qualifier for the Women's League. Welcome back to the America's Regional Qualifier. Still with me, Burger Kim and Arashi. Bring you guys the action for MLBB Women's. This is going to be the first time you guys are going to be seeing it. You guys got a glimpse of our teams. And it always ends up like this one. It is a matchup between Argentina and Brazil, Arashi. I'm not so sure if you've been following the men's division. The first time that uh, the Argentinian team went up against Brazil, it went all the way to three games straight. And I'm not surprised that this is the same case here for the women's division. We're going to go in for a match point here between the two teams toss out what happened in game number one toss out what happened in game in game number two toss it out because we are going to be having a hard reset here for both of the teams because it is about to go down here for this final matchup and this is going to decide whether it is going to be argentina or brazil that will be moving forward i, mean, I dare say it's necessary to have a full reset right here because there's just so much character so much I don't know, man, personality and how both teams were playing in game number one and two, right? And I think it definitely leaves a leaving uh, an impression when you're trying to strategize against it. How are we supposed to forget the team fight nature of Brazil? How are we supposed to forget the control, the positioning of Argentina in game number two? So technically not for both coaches, 
if they really want to try and play a mind game, they can go with a completely different strategy and maybe bank on the fact that their opponents have an expectation for them already from the past two games, right? If Brazil, for instance, goes for an insane split push strategy, that is just something that's gonna catch them completely by surprise. Catch Argentina oh, yeah. by, uh, by surprise immediately. So I think it's something that coaches can do, but it is risky, right? It is very high risk, high reward. If it works, wow, genius, mind games. But if it doesn't, you know, sometimes you, you're better just stick to what you do best. And that's also a very, very valid option. I was thinking of like the, the lineups here so far that work for both sides. It seems like uh, it is all about having um, back-to-back CCs. So for this particular game, uh, Brazil went for like, you know, single target or single hero lock um, type of heroes uh, to go into their composition. Edith with the onwards, you got the CC as well to zone out the back lines. But for the mm -hmm. side of uh, Argentina, it was so well-rounded here uh, for this in entire game. They got the X-Borg here to, to have that last insanity. They also got the poke summon out from Nels Novaria. And to think that a lot of people would argue saying that, you know, Novaria already fell out of the meta for this patch but you know going up against uh this lineup right like what i mentioned they didn't really have that much of a hard front line for the side of brazil that's why you know taking the shots from the astral echo was just way too much and by the time that the divine wave was purchased there by nell in game number two it just was enough to have that solo kill or that snipe kill coming out from from the astral recall so i don't think it is still ban worthy as of this point right it, it really still fits a certain type of composition but i think for both of these teams right it is all about having really just proper setup because if you think about it brazil only had it in the form of aslan in in that game right to set up a very good i am offended i think set up again and maybe vision tools before the setup even begins right i think that's the main issue for brazil you saw that when they were able to find a big i'm offended or a you know a big play technically in game number two they do have what it takes to really win out even against the supposed late games uh, composition of argentina the problem is they were unable to find many of those moments right when they even even when they do find success a lot of times it's not, it's not even a proper like setup a proper like big play it's literally the formations crumbling, kind of mixing with each other. And then Argentina kind of uh, losing one man due to like a burst play. So if Brazil feels like the way to deal with Argentina isn't to try and match them in the team fighting, it's to catch them off guard like they were doing in technically game number one and two, go for an assassin. Why not, right? We saw how effective it was in game number one. In game number two, technically La La Land was an assassin, right? Hiding in the yeah. bushes. Before you know it, a carry gets deleted. So. Technically, the style that they are using, that they have kind of been forced to use, is a, a style that works with assassins. So it's with a different kind of burst uh, strategy. So I think Brazil can definitely try and go for that if they feel like that's uh, the way to go. But that's what you're saying, Kim. Going with a proper, a proper front line will also allow them to be a bit more comfortable when they're moving around the map, when they're forced to kind of take a big engage tool. So I think that could be something that they want to uh, maybe acquire a lot earlier on in this drafting phase. Okay, so Brazil is also taking away, you know, assassin options here, knowing that uh, uh, this was a repeat ban coming out from Brazil. So it means that it is a target ban here towards uh, Lucid Dream. So you've seen her rock the Julian in, in the second game. And honestly, it's just way too good, right? Especially when it does snowballs like that. You have all of your side lanes as well amped up. But the expert was just such a genius pick coming out from, from the side of Argentina. That's that's the reason why they were able to get all of these wins in the team fight. So Brazil right now being on the red side, I think it's kind of more standard if they go in for the bands now. The Zusin. Will it be left open here? No, it's not. It's still gonna go to the ban list. So I think the chip and Jusin almost has a hundred percent ban rate in the America's regional qualifiers, even for the men's division. So again, I would be surprised if the Roger is here. Or maybe, you know what? Started off with the Julian here this time, right? Like it's it was always about the Roger uh on the blue side. Why not just shake things up? Like pick up the Julian. It had a uh, high success here under the hands here of Lucid Dreams. Great start, great early game, and great burst. One of the best junglers I would say in the current patch. So Argentina 
can actually start up with that, but that means that Brazil can actually either answer out with a Roger. The 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 Valentina is already out of the picture as well, so they go for an instant engage like the Minotaur. Oh, I was actually thinking of like uh, the Julian. Like it worked really well for them, but they are also thinking of the fact that okay, Brazil can pick up this Minotaur and one of the best. Uh, roamers as of the moment right that has an instant engage apart from the Arlot apart from the Terizla who's already out of the picture by the way so Argentina already prioritizing this uh, team fight eccentric composition with the Minotaur but that means Brazil can have some power picks here they can go for Julian Roger here a uh, very straightforward draft or they can either answer out to the Minotaur I was about to say, like, the Minotaur is still open, right? We saw it was uh, the Minotaur and the Terrizla were both banned away in game number two. But the fact that it was open, I feel like it was something that Argentina really unwilling to let go. Uh, you said it yourself, Kim, having a strong front line, having a front line that has crowd control and healing as well, by the way, is definitely a big value play. But uh, for Brazil, this low U was also open in game number two, but they went for the Aurora instead, trying to match Argentina when it comes to the team fighting. Now, this is a direct statement from Brazil. We're going to try and be elusive. And when they have an elusive, they've been able to actually win it out. Uh, a big counter or a big solution to the low Yi play is the Novaria. So there's no reason why uh, Argentina can't go for the same pick. Use it the same yeah. way, but also allow oh, wow. it to kind of scout out. But as you predicted, Kim, Mr. Kim, as always, Julian shows up, and the plot is something that they really like. So they prioritize the Minotaur over the Julian, knowing that it could have been stolen away there by Brazil. They actually went for something different here, uh, a Loi that gives them a little bit more uh, mobility across the map. So they can have that diversion play going for the ganks here. It seems like Argentina, you know, having this kind of lineup, right? Julian, Minotaur on the roam. You can have very fast rotations, and having the Loi here can really really speed up the uh, rotations of your team so now i think brazil still needs a front line here uh they went for an edit last time i would say it's still good for for counter setting here has a, enough damage with the primal wrath but you know without the Terizla in the picture they still need that front line and they go for the barrets again still unclear for me usually in this current patch larashi we see the barrets on the xp hardly already on the uh the the jungler position knowing that now you're going to be going up against uh, julian i think it can sustain on the sides but now they have to take away the heroes that will give them a hard time in the side lanes and that yep. is one right uh, the the impact can be felt with the the x borg here and you know if they're going to be putting this barrets in the xp lane you definitely don't want to go head to head with the the x borg here but what i'm worried about here for the barrets though is going to be the burst though come in from the julian and even the claude here because I'm you're going to be the, the frontliner one of the frontliners rather of uh, brazil definitely the frontliner but maybe they're just really confident in this barat and the ability to just get out with the crowd control immunity that the ultimate the daytona's welcome kind of allows for you to have we've seen this being a very common strategy the fact that you have an immobile uh an immobile barat with a high mobility playmaking tool like the di uh, the diversion can work out for sure. Oh wow! It definitely strengthens their front to back. But again, these two heroes were really stand out in game number two. Yeah. The ex Burks, especially in this particular composition against the Roger and the Barats, the, the ex Burk is just a great tool against any kind of tankier, more sustainable type of heroes that can kind of build tankiness as well. So taking that away kind of allows them to kind of match. Argentina when it comes to just muscle, you know, when they're just clashing purely on damage output. Yeah, the the, the Minotaur this time can either get poked by the Loi and without the export to kind of have that um, uh, initiation to take down the back lines. They already have that one less problem. They no, no longer have the pokes here of Novaria. So for Brazil, the impact can be felt from these two heroes with how well they've played it or how well they've utilized it in game number two to force out this this matchup, right? The Tigreal is also taken hmm. out here. I'm thinking of well, what Brazil will go for as the roamer. They definitely need a whole lot more CC. They seem to be uh, a little bit more comfortable playing that. So I'm thinking of roamers that can do that. Uh, one of them is a Carmilla you know, that really pops up from time to time mm. in in the draft or possibly will they go for their uh, either their jungler pick i'm assuming this is a barrett's xp lane so somebody that can clear as fast as the julian not unless you know they want to put this roger in the gold maybe pick up something 
uh, different here in the uh, the gold lane. A Harrod, sometimes we do see that uh, coming out. Mm -hmm. Or if you you know you want to go something different again, sustain the lane, Ruby. They go in for the Lolita here to amp up the front line here of Brazil, which is something that they definitely need. Mm. They got the projectiles to kind of uh, reflect back the damage coming out from the basic attacks of the Claude. So I do like that. They have that setup as well. But, you know, in between the Minotaur and Lolita, I would say the Minotaur has a whole lot more instant setups this is the reason why argentina actually prioritized this in the draft first they still do need a mid laner here something for nell and something for neo these are the two playmakers that made it uh happen for game number two that's the reason why we stretched out all the way to game number three yeah but the the issue right here is that even if you're a minotaur if you're the solo tank then Brazil can just send out the Barats, and when you're busy with the Barats, that's where the Numenon Blast comes out of nowhere. So Brazil has this big uh, counter type strategy, but oh, Argentina. Wow. Man, they're bringing out the Angela, first of all, and the Hylos. I've seen this hero wow. abuse so much in the Indonesian region, man. The Hylos rushing the Thunderbelt, going for all the mana items in the yeah. book. Yeah, Clock of Destiny. Tanky. Clock of Destiny, um, and a lot of different options available man this hero is so flexible right now you just need mana hp and a bunch of those thunderbelt yeah. stacks so with brazil going for this kind of a, this type of brawling scrapping composition they have to make sure that when they do go for a fight they make it a quick one and they don't allow this high loss to just keep stacking up the thunderbelt man because it can become mm -hmm. quite the nuisance later on the longer the game goes yeah, I think that the Thunder Belt is one of the belts that is to be feared here. <laughs> uh, yeah, they go in for the carry. There's a lot of uh, beefy front line here for Argentina. Definitely not going to be an easy job, though, to go up against the Claudia and with the Angela, too. So this means it's a mid lane Angela that I would say the Loi still has much better clear here. They do have the Minotaur, though, to kind of aid that. Uh, lacking factor that they have in the mid lane. They have this high loss as well, which is, I would say, a pocket pick here in this region, Arashi. It actually popped up several times for the, the men's division. United States White Horse has used this high loss even uh, for, for, for other countries. That was the case. A pocket pick. Uh, I would say some, some people would say niche pick, but I'd say it really works in this lineup uh, knowing that for a fact that you land in that glorious pathway, you slow everybody down in your path, and if you don't have any answers to that, it's, it's going to be really hard to evade that glorious pathway and not to mention the insane burst that Argentina has as of the moment. In my opinion, though, the carry kind of counters him. That's the problem here with the oh, Hylos. Dude. You kind of want to go for a front to back. And if you're doing front to back against a carry, it's already difficult. And compared to a lot of different uh, other heroes, the carry is right at home. They're just slowing the Hylos down, dashing out of, uh, out of distance. And there's no real way for the Hylos to really surprise and catch this carry later on in the game. Not to mention you're building, you're stacking HP. The carry does percentage max HP damage. So I feel like for Brazil, it is quite good enough. Uh, the, the solutions, at least, for the high loss possibility is already good enough. It's all about how they want to move around and what kind of uh, play will they have. Because you can see Neo going with the Revitalize here, trying to have an extra bit of healing for the team, combo with the Angela. But that means that playmaking-wise, there won't be a lot of options for Argentina to find ways to get to Aslan. And we've seen how mm -hmm. we've seen how that plays out in game number one. Okay, so they want to go in, double down on the team fights here by adding up the Angela. But like what I mentioned, right? The wave clear is gonna favor the side here of Brazil, which means that they can rotate much more faster onto the sidelines. Not to mention they have a Loi under their belt too. So it's gonna make it so much more easier for this ganks. Uh, they haven't reached that level 4 power spike just yet, but Neo and Hybridy, it's the dinosaur versus the centaur here in the uh, XP lane. But uh, I think uh, what's going to matter here is who's going to get that level 4 first, right? The Glorious Pathway is indeed going to be a powerful tool when it comes to the team fights, And uh, no casualties just yet, but, you know, lane clear. They have to get to that first. And Lala Land, right? Like, so much pokes coming out from the Loi. Rotation dive dispersion combination is enough to kind of let Nell back into the base. 14 seconds before the turtle is up here. I think it's going to be Hybridy that does have the power position here. They might go for a sandwich play down bot though. Waiting and springing a trap right in the jungle path. You can see there's a potential for one of the members from Argentina to just walk in there. Look at this though. They're still waiting. They just welcome. Already used up though. 
they thought they were mm -hmm. thinking that it was going to pay off really, really well. But now without an ultimate against mm -hmm. the minion and fury still, Brazil makes the first move onto Neo. Okay, Neo. Okay, she's gonna get the hard guard here and the glorious pathway onto Angela, oh. straight into Angela and the enhanced chains catching them off guard. And there goes the flicker in the Minoan's Fury. Hybridy is gonna be taking the brunt of the damage. Career from the backside going in for the new one. Blast gets in four members. But unfortunately, La La Land does not have any more mana there. It would have been a nice setup, but unfortunately, it is going to be Brazil or rather Argentina winning in that trade and getting in. A free turtle here for this game number three. I really thought that Brazil were gonna go a bit more aggressive there, knowing that they have a low Yi, they have a Roger. All great picks for our pre level four skirmish, but they just waited for the level four. And with Argentina having all the tools there, you saw that combo, man. Revitalized Hard Guard, High Loss running straight at you, not to mention backed up by an enhanced chain and the Minion Fury. Argentina just completely steamrolled Brazil right there. and. Without enough crowd control, with Keria coming in so late to the party, it's a great Numenon Blast that has potential to be landed multiple times in this game. But it has to be landed earlier in the fight, man. You can't just wait that far uh, that far out. So I think Brazil needs to kind of plan out these fights a bit better. And considering that they have the, uh, the diversion, I feel like they should be able to find windows to try and make that happen. Oh, this is actually interesting uh, build coming out from Angelus, right? Oh, the diversion play though. I think uh, Lucid Dreams, they know that they teleported somewhere else. Miz oh. setting up the place here over at the top side. She still does not have the flicker yet, but the presence of mind here from both these teams, right? That could have been at least a counter engage from the side of Argentina. Going back to the the pickup here on, on the, the Loi and even the, uh, the the Sky Piercer for, for Angelus, right? I think that you started it off with this item. You kind of want to go in for those dives. So this means that they might go in for the full engage here, knowing that the Roger has that. So maybe go spam in those basic attacks and go in for the engage. Oh. Now, Hybridy, gonna go, get into the tone as well. I'm going to be not going to be able to sustain oh. that, though. Neo pops in the Revitalize in the nick of time. That is so... Unfair, man. Look at the Thunder Belt. It's not a regular belt, everybody. It is a Thunder Belt that, uh, that's the first item here of Neo, and definitely one of the best adjustments that were made apart from the Sky Piercer into uh, this current patch, which makes other heroes actually shine, right? They get the Thunder Belt, get in a uh, part of a Clock of Destiny. You can just keep on going for these engages. And as you can see, the Heart Guard is most of the time reserved towards Neo here. We're standing at a 102. They're getting zoned away from the turtle. Look at the blazing duet here from Riza. Not enough damage just yet, but it's gonna be enough to take down Angelus. The Numenon Blast again from the backside. It's not gonna be enough. I pretty forced to flicker out as Korea. Gonna try to use in the reflection coming out from that side. A double kill picked up by Neo. With the hard card coming out from Nell as well. They can go all aggressive here on Brazil. Six kill. Oh. Oh. Under the board, Lucid Dreams. Okay, they do find a win there with Aslan. I wasn't so sure. I think uh, Aslan was just going to try to clear out the base, but Doom does manage to find out Lucid Dreams. There's a diversion play here onto Nell, though. Is he going to get the combination? Flicker out for Nell in the nick of time. Not able to get any, but it is going to be Argentina winning in all of these trades across the boards, but they haven't been able to convert just yet. They, in fact, lost the turret on the top side of the map too. So Brazil kind of finding ways to kind of at least stay somewhat equal. But again, when it comes to the positioning, the maneuvers before the fights, Argentina are just doing a lot better right here. And Brazil, they do have less uh, options, less tools to really work with. But if they keep the game stagnant like this and they aren't unable to really capitalize on the diversions, then they're kind of wasting a lot of this early game potential from La La Land. And Argentina, as always, you can see, with the advantage in burst damage, with the chance to just go hard guard and cancel out a pickoff, they are a lot more comfortable just walking around solo around the map. Because even Brazil, even if they do find a pickoff, they don't have enough damage to take out the tankier members from the side of Argentina. Well, they don't have that much items just yet, right? Like, if you think about it, Brazil does have the damage. If you think about it, like you, you got two marksmen, you got uh, La La Land here on to the Loi, but the problem is, how do you peel through the front line here? Look at Neo, 
He's gonna get oh. ganked here by four members. Look at the Aslan. Basic attacks here and there. The Windtalker has been picked up. Half HP for Neo and still survives. And not to mention, you still have the hardcore available anytime here to go up against Neo. You got the diversion oh. play here all the way to the turtle. Will this be enough to change the ties, Korea? Not using up the Numenon Blast just yet, but there it goes. The Numenon Blast, and it's gonna be Angelus. Brazil picking up the turtle and the kill on to Lucid Dreams. With that, the Tonas welcome. They get a clap back Ooh. onto the diversion play. They get the turret as well up on the bottom. Riza going in for the blazing duet. Lala Land does not have the flicker. Uses it actually, but not enough time as Neo again will pick up the kill. How do you penetrate the front lines here as the high loss just keeps on going? You have the slows here from the Angela. It is not going to be easy to get out of that. Unfortunately, Angelus is able to use the like and pounce out. And that is honestly what's really making it difficult here for Brazil to go in for the engage. The high loss, you got the Angela, and you got the um, Owens Fury here to kind of counter-engage up against the members oh. of Argentina. Well, Brazil, at least, are making a great job moving around the map, using the diversion there, sending everyone to the top side and diversioning down to the bottom side. I think that was a really good play already. Argentina has to see it coming, man, but they spot out the diversion this time. This is out okay. of position, though. Yep, there's the Glorious Pathway to slow everybody down as Neo just continuously intimidates everybody in these team fights. One step ahead of everybody, just blocking in the path of whoever wants to dive in at these moments. Oh. And now Neo again, gonna go in for Korea here, gets in a nice new middle blast, but the hard guards up with the revitalize, and they go in for the flicker. Minowan's Fury combination, and to top it all off, you got the Blazing Duet here from Riza picking up a double without any casualties at all. Brazil started up oh. the team fight, but now they go for the retaliation. Hybridy misses that the tone as welcome for a little bit. Almost uh, catching Riza off guard there. Force to use that Purify 302 on this Claude, by the way. Nine kills for the side of Argentina. What I'm seeing here is that they haven't been able to convert as much, right? Look at the turrets up top here. It's it's mostly Brazil that has taken it by force. It's due to the macro pressure that they have. When it comes to fights, Argentina are just getting ahead every single time in these brawls because they have a lot more survivability. I'm hoping to see a lot of regeneration uh, negation items on the side of Brazil because they desperately need it, man. With the, against the Revitalize, uh, the Hard Guard, and the 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 roar from the minotaur as well there's no way you come out on top right here if it's just a pure on slugfest brazil have to find ways to isolate argentina maybe use the numinant blast as a zoning tool instead of trying to use it as actual just crowd control or play the macro game and use a diversion and do it in a more elusive manner in a more flanking style i do feel like whenever brazil whenever they take a the fight that gets quite messy i feel like argentina takes it all the way though just because all of the heroes Kind of work well independently, whereas for Brazil, especially the backline, they're so vulnerable that they require assistance from each other to even survive Neo just barreling yeah. down through. Yeah, it's the same case as the x bore You can see the presence being felt, right? <laughs> like, Neo is just going all the way up in front of the members here of Brazil just to intimidate them. Does he have the glorious pathway? No, he doesn't. I think the sheer presence here of Neo is just enough Ooh. to cause the members of Brazil to just back away. And not to mention, right, the hard card is still available. So it's, it's again, not that easy to take her down. But uh, I think for Brazil, they're just going to convert to some neutral objectives here as Angelus going to be making her way up top they do have the diversion to go all the way to the lord they do have that vision as well because Korea and hybridity is over there as well so they might go and try to go in for that uh, concealed oh. play there flicker in there by Lala Land misses there as Nell as well forced to use the flicker out there's going to be immense pressure here as the members here of Argentina are going to go in for the lord there's the new winner blast will it be enough time to go in for the steel blazing duet here Lucid Dreams going to be picking it up for Argentina Glorious Pathway being laid out Hybridity going to be taking a breath of the damage here but from the back side Aslan going to be able to free it everybody Angelus going to try to take in the back lines but Aslan again with the impeccable positioning, getting a 3-0-0 onto the carry. They actually managed to take down Neo and Miz in the process, right? These are the things that you need to do. And this is a ticking time bomb composition coming out from Brazil. You got two marksmen. They got the Claude here with Riza who has scaled up pretty well. But up against two marksmen, the carry that can melt down the tanks. They kind of have to convert here for the side of Argentina. They've been winning all of these team fights, So they kind of have to clap back here at some point. 
it's just going to be a bit more difficult for them to try and get anything. Because they did lose several members. And that's... You know, that fight kind of happened in an ideal condition, ideal situation for Brazil. And still, they were unable to really get too much value so far at least. So now for Argentina, I feel like two plus of the Oasis is built up for the Minotaur and the Angela. The cooldown for that item is on each individual hero, each individual player, not from like the item itself. So technically, if the extra shielding that you get when you're low already gets popped, you know, the next heal coming in from the Minotaur uh, or the Angela won't really help you out anyways. So that's something that they kind of have to think about for that Argentina. For Brazil, again, I think it's only a, it's about kind of getting into synergy right here. Because you see that Aslan desperately wants to dish out some damage, carry the game for her team. But at the same time, with the way Brazil has been playing these fights, they're forced to kind of dive in past all the crowd control to get their hands on Riza or on Lucid Dreams because they can't deal enough damage to deal with Neo. So they gotta get on the same page, right? They can't leave uh, Aslan in the back and leave everyone diving forward. They have to all be on the same page and how they want to approach these fights. This is honestly really tough for, for Brazil. Like, they already have the damage though here from, from Aslan. As long as they can penetrate through Miz and Neo, they should be okay, right? Uh, but the, the problem is here, Nell has that hard guard, right? To kind of have that additional shield and the slows as well coming out from the love waves. As you can see, Nell not even gonna join the team fights here. Just hiding in the bush down bottom, right? Just to make sure that the ultimate is up when they need it. It's gonna be that pressure. Oh. The diversion play has been made though. It's gonna be Neo. Okay, it's only gonna be Aslan. Oh, wow. Angelus rather sent in through the portal there. I think a little bit of miscommunication towards their side. Fortunately enough, she, wa she was pretty fast, able to like and pounce out of there or that would have been at least a pick off there because Neo was just right around the corner. A dangerous moment right there for Brazil, man. Argentina could have really punished that very decisively. Unfortunately, they were kind of reading into it as well. Like, hang on a minute. If anyone comes through here, there's no way it's only one person, right? Uh, but turns out it is. Now for Brazil, they're trying to make the same play. Send the Loyi plus one to the bottom side. Oh, no. Uh, oh, but look at this in the mid lane. Yep, that is one heck of a pathway there. Highway to heaven or highway to hell there, but that was enough to zone away the members here of Brazil as Argentina wasting no time here. They got the claw. This is the enhancer that we're talking about that I think Brazil, they're not going to let this go without a fight. The damage from Riza is also there. Plus the enhanced Lord swings are starting to hurt right now, but it is going to be all about the zoning oh. here. Neo, the Tonus welcome and the glorious pathway to combine it up. You got the Minoa Sphere as Riza goes all the way into the back lines to get in that peel. The Newman Blast is here. Neo, how are you still surviving all of this Lucid Dreams is down for the count. Brazil gets a massive pick off despite the zoning there. They got the target that they want. And without the Retribution Holder, they can go for this Lord. But you know what? Neo and Miz says no here. Korea does find Riza here. She's a little bit low. They're going to continue the team fights here as Neo going to force to pop in. The Glorious Pathway is going to be Korea soaking up all of the damage here. She goes down. Glorious Pathway for the backside. Miz is going to get taken down there by Aslan. There's the shutdown that comes through here from Riza. Neo still surviving here. But without the Heart Guard, it's going to be a double kill there picked up by Aslan. And now you see the value coming out from the carry here of Aslan that hasn't been taken down despite the fact that there's so many ways to dive in and take her down. Looking at her items here, it is almost complete for the carry. You got the Demon Hunter Sword, the Golden Staff, the Corrosion Sight, and of course the Wind of Nature to counter out the Blazing Duet damage coming out from Riza. Wind of Nature, I think, is the most important one there. Now with the Sea Halberd though, more max HP damage in the, uh, in the inventory slot for her. Looking at the side of Neo though, it's an oracle on top of uh, all these tankier items he's building. He's not actually stacking up a lot of HP or mana. I don't believe I saw the Clock of Destiny in the inventory of Neo. So it's not that build that we're looking at. And I think now Brazil kind of caught wind of a potential solution right here. The carry at this point is strong enough to duel anyone, including the Claude. So if they send the carry out as the split push tool and still escort her with La La Land, it's kind of two birds with one stone. They keep the backliners relatively in safety, and technically they can they can keep winning all of these uh, all of these two v twos or one v ones. Now they've made their move though, and they might be going straight for the Lord here. Oh, it's a reset. 
Okay, reset here. Oh. The Tonus welcome. Who do they get? I think they got their Lucid Dreams. Let's go fight with the one with Blast and the Blazing. They went on to Riza. They do the cleanup work. A double kill here for Angelus. As Riza gonna do up the work, but look at the guards' it's full work. It's gonna reflect up the damage. It's not gonna be easy to take down that Lolita. It's gonna be two members for the price of one. Hybridity, the only one to fall, but the price that he was willing to pay to get Brazil ahead. Right now, the question remains, are they going to go for the store? Because Argentina, even though they don't have their junglers, even Lucid Whoa. Dreams is not here, they're going to force out the team fight. There's the glorious pathway onto La La Land. He gets the winter crown there to buy some time. Riza not going to be able to dish out the damage that he wants up against Aslan. It's way too much, but with Nell there to back her up, they are still able to sustain. But man, this carry, so deadly at this point. Every single member here of Brazil almost getting into the immortality point seven minutes into the game. No one is letting up just yet. It is clapbacks after clapbacks here. And this is where it started to show Brazil already earning that uh, time that their marksmen are going to shine into this game. And Aslan again, time and time again, you are not able to touch her in any of those team fights anymore. It's now the tanks. It's now the front lines of Argentina that is suffering. The uh, true damage coming out from the carry, but bottom side though, there's gonna be a diversion play here onto Aslan. Okay, he gets the backup here. Now gonna be forced to use in that that hard guard in the nick of time to escape that. There's the new and blast here onto Lucid Dreams, but they they do don't get anyone no follow up just yet. Lord is oh. already at one for the HP, but that's gonna be a duel down bottom side. Aslan, no more immortalities here. They get the shutdown here after a long while as Miz as well able to clap back up against the jealous. What is going on here for Brazil? They are they already have the damage, but the way Argentina was able to split up the map. Get Aslan down bot. Get Angelus also in the Lord pit. What is going on here with Argentina? They got the Lord here as well. Now it's only Korea and La La Land left to defend here. They got Riza here as well. Glorious Pathway being laid all the way into the base here of Brazil. As La La Land will fall, it's now down to Korea. The death timers are real here. They're gonna go for the enhanced chase. It is over. Brazil is gonna fall. Argentina gonna successfully pull off a reverse sweep. What a play from Argentina. The whole sequence of events, dealing with the macro game pressure, it's fortunate that they do have that Angela as a factor as well. We have talked about the dangers of this high loss, the fact that the carry can be a potential counter. But when the high loss comes in out of nowhere like that, with the help of the, of the Angela as well, there's just way too much tankiness in, built in in that moment for the two main backliners of Brazil to melt down. The, the concentrated effort of both the low Yi and the carry still wasn't enough, man. That high loss is absolutely oppressive, and you're seeing why right here. And with the revitalize even, man, I can't imagine how much damage she tanked up, and how much damage that Brazil was outputting, and was just thinking like, man, why isn't she falling? This is ridiculous. I know, right? It's, it's absolutely insane to see that despite the, even the turret damage this is i mean there's only once that she got shut down but this just enabled argentina really to go in for the dives especially for lucid dreams and reza it all the made it all the more easier for them right you lay the glorious pathway down you get that movement speed up for the claw and the blazing duet just gets all the more deadly here at this point this is one of the uh, points that you see the revitalize come up angela's gonna try to go in for the front lines and eventually reza again having a much better position there with the blazing duet there was a lot of uh team fights here and there in this game but it was uh, a lot of clapbacks coming out from the side of brazil by the time it reached like the 15 minute mark where aslan got in the items already so it was starting to hurt they got a couple of shutdowns as well that's why they were able to eventually move forward you can see that brazil i feel like they were just really desperately trying to go for a decisive fight they even resorted to using hybrid's daytona's ultimate as a, in an aggressive fashion and we're thinking it's going to be a bit of a back and forth but since they know that they, they can't match with the sustain and the maneuverability from the hard guard potential from the set of argentina they decided at least we're going to get a pickoff immediately but once they did that unfortunately you can see that the damage output the aoe from everyone was just too much to handle man and you can see that because of this there's so much aoe being thrown around aslan is trying her best and move forward try and do some damage but she's kind of constantly zoned out by the the threat of just getting hit by a random 
technically stray crowd control tool. And afterwards, after that main play in the bottom lane, man, I feel like that just sealed the deal. They lost two in the bottom side of the map. They even lost one of one other member on the top side near the Lord even. So yeah, it was jealous. Argentina, Argentina just played it really, really well. They were playing it patient and they made sure that they knew who has the urgency, who is the one that really needs the fight, and it wasn't them. So they were just content, just sitting around, waiting for Brazil to eventually be forced to make a desperate play. And I gotta say, man, it's just a great show of game understanding and, of course, the discipline in, in those intense moments in the middle of trying to pull off a reverse sweep. Look at the damage, though, of uh, Riza here. 94,000. I think this is, has to be the most damage uh, that has been dealt by a gold laner. Uh, I think the last time we've... Uh, uh, a broadcast is the broadcast in the male division it, over in the, to the playoffs as well it was at least like 70k damage but this has to be the most damage coming out from the claude right and she was enabled so much to go in for these dives all care of the teammates that she had in the abyss neo lay out the glorious pathway for riza to be able to have a very nice blazing duet to just set things up here and of course it is going to be riza the mvp for this game there were a lot of heroes a lot of players that enabled riza to reach this far into the matchup 619 onto the claude you still got the wind of nature just to respect the opponent as well knowing that the carry was already dishing out a lot of damage in the late game plus the rogers like and pounce but this has to be the most damage that i've seen 94,000. let's see if uh, later on we'll have a whole lot more damage coming out from the gold nainers but overall the claude of riza just had such a good game here there was so much support from the entire team which really enabled her to scale that far but like we said, it's also still comboable with the uh, hard guard as well. And for the most part, in game number two, we saw Riza on the same pick. It's just that Brazil weren't able to put up enough of a fight for Riza to kind of show off that late game damage, that shred, that AoE as well. So in this game where the fight become, becomes that much closer, especially in the late game, you saw, man, that a well-placed, well-timed blazing duet. Still keeping in mind the bulwark from the Lolita that can negate the bulk of that damage. She just times it perfectly and just shreds everyone down, showing again that Claude in the late game, you know, the carry is great, but the Claude, you know, yeah. in an AoE setting can definitely do a lot of damage still. Yeah, this is where you see uh, the different combinations that work in the lineup, Glorious Pathway, the hard mm. guard and the blazing duet just to set things up for Riza. Congratulations to Argentina for pulling off a reverse seep. This was uh, nothing new. You guys uh, might have seen this in the previous stream of uh, the men's division, wherein they also open up the Americas B with uh, Argentina actually taking in a reverse sweep up against Brazil. And Ooh. now it is going to be Argentina actually for the men's division going to WEC to Riyadh this year. So looking forward to that. And for this Argentinian female team, we are looking to see so much more the understanding the adaptability that they've made the changes that they had for the last two games just really sealed the deal for them to be able to move forward but for now arashi we're gonna be taking a break before we head over to our next Ooh. matchup we just kick-started it off with three matches here for the women's division so see you guys in a little bit don't you guys go away isf american regional qualifiers we'll be right back